try to be on good terms with your breath. You're going to be spending the whole hour with the breath. So be friendly. Take a friendly interest in how the breath is going. Be sensitive to how it feels and how it might feel better if you paid a little more attention to it. You're trying to develop a good relationship here because it's one of those friendships that's going to see you all the way through life. Because the skills we're learning here as we meditate are not just for when we're sitting here with our eyes closed. They're useful all the time. Being sensitive to how the breath feels in the body is an important way of staying in touch with your own mind. Because many times in the course of the day, uh, subtle feelings of irritation, subtle feelings of fear, greed, anger, delusion, whatever, will come up. And given the noise level of our lives, these things are so quiet we hardly notice them, and yet they get lodged in the mind and begin to grow if you're not paying close attention. But if you're there with a the breath, it's very easy to see these things as they come and to disperse them before they develop in anything strong, or before they s put out roots into the mind. So you want to learn to be sensitive to this area of, where, of your awareness as much as you can. This is what puts you in touch with your own mind, or the more subtle aspects of your own mind that you tend to miss. At the same time, it gives you a comfortable place to stay. One of the reasons we create so much trouble for ourselves, because there's a basic sense of discomfort in the present moment. And we act out of that discomfort, and very rarely do we do things skillfully from that attitude, from that sense of lack of well-being in the present moment. So in this way, as you're working with the breath, trying to make it comfortable, it's a gift not only to yourself but to the people around you. If you can sit bathed in a sense of comfortable breath, you don't feel any need to say anything or do anything that's going to be harmful to anybody. If anger does come up, and you can learn how to breathe through the physical side of the anger, you'll notice every time any kind of strong emotion arises in the body, there's going to be a physical component. Some place in the body the breath energy feels blocked. If you're sensitive to that, you can disperse it quickly. So these are good skills to have wherever you are, whatever you're doing. But these aren't the only skills we need. After all, the, the training that we're in involves virtue, concentration, and discernment. It's all three of these things acting together that give you a sense of security wherever you are. The security of virtue comes from having principles that you know that you can stick with. Sometimes they may be hard to stick with, but they're not impossible. No killing, no stealing. No illicit sex, no lying, no intoxicants. These are good principles to live by, and you want to make them absolute principles in your life. Sometimes you hear people afraid of people who are moral like that. They say, well, they're going to turn around and start inflicting their morality on me. But that's not the purpose of the principles. It's your own training. It's for your own protection. In Thai, they have the word unjai, which means to keep your heart warm. It gives a basic sense of inner warmth, inner security. And you know that you've got these principles in your life, that you can learn to depend on yourself no matter what the circumstances are outside. And as for the sacrifices that may have to come, well, you've got the meditation to provide that inner sense of security, realizing that the the sorts of pleasures or the sorts of rewards you might get from breaking the precepts are not really worth it. They don't provide the same sense of well-being that your own meditation practice provides, your own concentration, your own discernment provides. So look at these 
these trainings as interconnecting, as supporting one another. The concentration helps the discernment. Your discernment turns around and helps your concentration. Same with the virtue and the concentration, the virtue and the discernment. They all help one another. They're all a gift to yourself and a gift to other people. They all provide security for yourself, security for other people. Because what you're doing is you're approaching your life as a question of skill. What's the most skillful way to act? What's the most skillful way to speak? What's the most skillful way to think? And the rewards of that skillfulness don't have to wait until the end of your life or some far distant time in the future. You can begin to see them now as you're practicing, as you develop the ability to keep the mind with one object. Keep it comfortably with that object. Basically having precepts for your mind. Right now your precepts for the mind are you're not going to go anywhere else. You're not going to kill off your concentration. You're not going to steal the things you don't like about other people and take them to think about. All the way down the line, there are ways you can take the five precepts and think about them. They apply to your mind right now, too. And that gives you a sense of security, as you can stay here and not wound yourself with your other ways of thinking. Because this is one of the Buddha's basic insights, is that we, we wound ourselves. In that passage we chanted just now, when the mind, when con confronted with the ways of the world, is not moved. When it's touched by the ways of the world, it doesn't waver. It isn't shaken. That's a great blessing. And the reason we're touched and normally touched and affected by the ways of the world is basically we go out and we try to grab hold of them and bring them in. Of course, when we bring them in, they're going to affect the mind. But if you have your principles that you don't have to go out and find any true happiness out there, you've got everything you need here inside. This is what enables the mind to be more independent, less affected by the changes of the world, gain and loss, status and loss of status, praise and criticism, pleasure and pain. These things come and they go, and we normally pull them in. And as we pull them in, we wound ourselves, and as we wound ourselves, we weaken ourselves. And when we become weak, it becomes more and more difficult to behave in the ways that we know we should. This is where our sense of insecurity comes in. It's ironic that in our search for security and things outside, we make ourselves less and less secure. But as you learn that you can, the mind can relate to itself in more and more skillful ways all the time. And you have less need to go out and grab things and pull them in and wound the mind. When the mind isn't wounded, then these things just can't seep in. The mind can stay strong. It can stay secure. It can begin to trust itself. So these are some of the advantages that come from approaching daily life as a skill, as a question of how do you approach the way you talk with other people, how do you approach the way you relate to yourself. How do you relate to your work? In ways that are least harmful and most beneficial. And the training that the, the Buddha gives us in terms of virtue, concentration, and discernment, these, these trainings give us the tools that we need in order to be more and more skillful in how we, how we live our lives. And as we're more skillful, we're less wounded, the people around us are less wounded. It's a gift of safety for ourselves and for other people, a gift of security. Because the world changes all the time. And the only thing that you can find constant is if you constantly stick to these trainings and develop that sense of strong center inside. To the point where you know you really can trust yourself to do the most skillful thing, whatever the situation is. And that's the best kind of security. 
Without that security, nothing feels safe. With that security, nothing can touch you.